And good evening and welcome to my Ghent Velligum preview. I am once again joined by Oliver Nason. Oliver, how are you? Thank you for coming back on. Thanks for having me and uh, I'm fine. I'm just fine. Good, good, good. Now, uh, since we've last spoken, you've just been through a relatively big block of work. You perform well in Umloop and Kurna, finishing 7th and 8th, making the front selection in both races. Uh, looking back at those two, what did you think? Obviously pleased because you made the front selection. Uh, what what, do you, what were your thoughts about those two races? Uh, Saturday, Omloop, I was super happy about it. I felt I was on, on my place. Uh, there was not much more for, not much more for me to, to perform there. But on Sunday, I was a little bit bummed not to be in the, the small group with Sagan. So, tactically, I wasn't on my best on Sunday, but in the end, two top ten finishes. Actually, my two first top ten finishes in the, in the classics. It's really something to be to be happy about. So I was happy. And then after that, away to Paris Nice and uh, yep. turning into a a sprinter by the looks of it. You're know, mixing it with uh, Kittel and Greipel and Christoph. What was it? You had a seventh place and then two twelfths. You enjoy yeah. the sprinting with the, the big boys. Well, for sure, I'm not a sprinter. I know I'm far from fast enough to be a real good sprinter, but. Uh, in our team, Paris was a really big goal, and with Romain Bardet being excluded, the goals kind of changed, and we had to try to do something every day. And uh, when we looked at our team, we were almost only climbers, and every day they said, ah, for the sprints, only you just give it a go, and uh, if you're 15, whatever, you know, it's fine. So uh, just, just do something. <laughs> and then... Even in the Queen stage, you know, with no easy gruppetto riding for yourself, you finished 26th yeah. alongside some like real climbers. Uh, what was the idea behind not having an easy day and, and really kind of testing yourself? Uh, that, was, that was basically the idea, actually. I just wanted to uh, to make it really hard to the weekend for me. But this was already pretty hard, but uh, going into the Classics... I think it's best to, to make it as hard as possible since I didn't do San Remo and uh, I still had a lot of time to to freshen up the legs again before I was to Vlaanderen on Wednesday so I thought let's make it hard and it can only be good for the legs and the shape I think. You have a very busy week of racing coming up. Dwarz of Landing yeah. Wednesday, E3 Harrowbeck Friday, Ghent Veligum which we're going to talk about on Sunday. How how do you manage your your energy levels for these three big races? Uh, oh, it's simple. You, I eat all I can. <laughs> it's basically it. And uh, between the races, I, I try not to be out of my bed too much, and I'll see what happens. I haven't done three in a row, three hard races like that in a row just yet in my career. But uh, I think it should be all right since uh, Wednesday and Friday is only two hundred k. So uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. He's easy. Uh, I think the weather looks okay. Yeah, it looks pretty nice for Belgium. Yeah, uh, certainly Wednesday and Friday look absolutely fine. Sunday, maybe a hint of some wind. Yeah, the thing is, in uh, Ghent River game, it's uh, on the west of Flanders. There, you can ask any experienced uh, sports director or any, any local. They'll tell you even if there's no wind announced. There's always wind. So, no matter what, uh, what they announce on, on the weather, it's always going to be windy. Now, last year you suffered some bad luck. Uh, you picked up an illness uh, yeah. fairly kind of close to this point. Uh, you did, what was it, Duas of Landerin and Ghent Veligam and was a DNF in both? I was supposed to do all three of them and uh, I was just really, really... I was dead, actually. I'm, I'm the kind of guy, if I have... There's a small fever. Uh, I'm ready to to organize my own funeral, almost. So <laughs> another person to be to be sick. So yeah, I had some stomach problems then, and I wasn't out of my bed for the entire week, almost. So it was a really really shit, uh, shit week. Yeah, about a chance to put it right this week. We looking at the route. They've stuck to the, the same sort of parkour as last year. Uh, with that very, very challenging final ascent of the Kemmelberg, uh, which comes in at some ridiculous percentage. Uh, the climb isn't long, it's about 800 metres, but last year we saw uh, the attack from Sagan put everybody into trouble and, and away, away he went. Uh, looking at the route, what do you think for this year? Do you think it, 
it favours the breakaway or do the sprinters have a, have a good chance? Well, you'll see on the stars I, I've selected, I'm uh, considering both scenarios. It all depends on uh, the cooperation in the front, because for sure it's hard enough, Kamabel is for sure hard enough to to make a big selection and if Sagan wants he can, he can be alone on the top. But a lot of riders are, uh, some riders are able to follow him and it all depends on what they do afterwards. He's not going to do everything alone, I think. So, um, and also for him, he's pulled so much into going into the finals, all, the, all these, these last races. At one point, I think he's going to have enough and he's just going to do, do the sprint and maybe win it like that. So, it all depends on the operation in the first group. You, you touched on the distance. This race, obviously, is 250 kilometers. What does that extra 50k do to the legs? Um, oh, it gets the really, really sharp, explos explosive sections like the camel bag. They're a little bit less explosive than, than they, they can be in a shorter race, which um, makes the race a little bit more suited for super endurance, ri endurance riders. And um, yeah, it changes quite a lot, actually, because even if it's flat in the final, uh, 50k is still a big hour of racing and... Uh, that makes a big difference in, in what you have left in the legs. And you'll be riding this with Stein van den Berg, uh, yeah. who is skipping, I think, Dwalsdorf Landon. He's yeah. doing the two. Uh, obviously, having two riders potentially in that front group would make a massive difference. Well, that would be really, really nice. I think the team is really hoping for, uh, for us to, to do some results and to get a lot of points. And uh, with Stein being healthy again, I think, I think and hope we can do something. But uh, it's hard to predict. Ta tactics wise, you know, as you approach it, obviously we have two laps of the Camelberg, but the first one comes quite uh, quite far from home. Is it a case of just staying with the front group until the final climb of the Camelberg and seeing how good your legs are? Uh, well, the thing is, it's not only those two little climbs, it's also all the, the, the open roads, uh, the, the, the wind. Everything that can happen. I mean, last year, after 60k, at 60 out of 240k, there was a bunch of like 65 guys still in contention for the win. So, in a race like in Twivelgem, danger is uh, after every, every corner. So, I think it's, it's a race where you have to really be mentally prepared to to go into every corner like it's the last corner. And uh, you have to really look at the at the parcours, check the wind direction, and know where and when to be in the front. And uh, I think on the final climbs, actually, I think there's going to be pretty easy to be in the front because the groups are, aren't going to be so significant anymore. Yeah, and I suppose it is that way if you're forced to ride near the front of the peloton for 200 kilometers, you can begin to imagine how riders are tired towards the end of the race. Yeah, but that's the thing. You have to know when it's really important to, to fight for the position and when position 85 is enough, you know. You don't have to fight for position 85, but at some point you have to be like top 20, and then it's, it's quite hard to, to stay there. So uh, knowing when or where to be where is something that comes with experience and years, I think, but uh, also a good preparation can, can help us. And do you, in terms of the race radio, do, do the di are the directors kind of good at saying, you know, now you need to be top 20, or is that something that you would expect to know yourself? Uh, for me, for these races, I know myself, but um, it all depends on the sports director. Some sports directors, I mean, I've had sports directors who, who think there's going to be echelons after every corner. So they say, now you go to the front, go to the front. And you listen five times, maybe ten times, but uh, after 25 times, you say, man, <laughs> you're just going to keep it easy in the back, and then it's gonna, there's going to be echelons, and in the end, they say, hey, I told you so. <laughs> and are you, are you a rider that likes to sometimes just take the, the earpiece out? Oh, for, in a race of 260k, there's, there's uh, at least 200k where I don't have it in. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a, yeah, I mean, Vandenberg, there was a famous point a couple of years ago where he dropped just about all his team uh, when he was riding for Ethics and he had the earphone out. I could imagine when he put it back in, uh, the abuse he got from his DS. Uh, we've done some stars as per usual. Uh, now, obviously, we're filming this on the Monday and Gent Veligam is on the Sunday, so... We have two two very big races in between, which could potentially change how things go. 
Uh, one star, you have Luke Rowe, Nicky Terpstra and Jasper Stuyven. Some very strong riders in there. Uh, Rowe, who was present with you in the, the break in Umloop and Kuna, he has he's looking particularly strong, yeah? Yeah, yes, for sure. Uh, all the races I've, did with, I've done with him, also in Paris, where he was working a lot, he's shown a lot of strength and I was also talking with him. He He's super motivated to to step up to the next level in, in the classics and I think he's capable. Terpstra, just, you know, if it's windy, Terpstra is one of the best in the winds, yeah? Yeah. And also, um, with, all, with all, everything he's already performed in these races, he, he always has to be, has to have at least one star and I've heard in Tireno he, he was riding really well. Uh, he's coming up to form a little bit later. He wasn't super good in, in Oblo Pancuna but he's, he seems to be on form on, on a good moment, so that's right about now. And Stoyven seems to be a rider who is making, he made a step up last season, uh, and he seems to be making potentially another step up this season. Mm -hmm. uh, riding wanna, without uh, Cancellara seems to be, you know, he's got to prove himself now, I suppose. Yeah, I wanted to give him two stars, but then again, there are so many strong riders, and, and Jasper is he's super young, actually. I think he's only uh, 23 years old. And Gent Wivelgem is the last of, uh, for him, Sanremo, Atri and Gent Wivelgem, so it's a super hard week for him also, I think. Uh, I think he's going to be strong, he has a big chance, but uh, I ch I've chosen some other riders with two stars, just because he's still so young. Uh, one star I've got, Lars Bohm, who you don't have, I, he's obviously moved back to Jumbo, team leader, he's, yeah. a, he's a very strong rider, as you kind of touched on there, it's hard sometimes to narrow it down just to nine. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I would expect him to go well. I have included some rider called Nason. Uh, you know, he's, uh, he's an attacking rider. Uh, yeah. That's Lawrence Nason. Don't, don't uh, kid yourself. <laughs> uh, and I have Arno Demar, who you have in two stars, I have in one star. You obviously were close to him in Paris-Nice. He performed well in Milan-San Remo. Most people seem to think Demar is riding really well just now. You agree? Absolutely. Um, he's a lot stronger than last year. And last year he won Sanremo. Now the way he won the first stage in Paris and uh, also the way he, he's done Kuhne, for example, he showed a lot of he showed a lot of strength. And I think he when he's there, it's really difficult to beat him. So he's one of the guys who can who can be who can survive the selection and be super fast at the finish. He seems to be potentially climbing better than, say, Christoph and Degenkolb. Uh, Absolutely. Which is good. You, I put your selection for two stars down as Lotto Sudal uh, because <laughs> you had both Rolands and uh, De Boucher. Uh, for me, I mean, I'm looking at the, the races earlier this season and Lotto Sudal were a little bit disappointing. I know Tij uh, was good in Kurna. Uh, the crashes maybe took him out in Umloop, but... You have faith in Lotto Sudal? Yeah, it's um, more of a feeling I have when I'm thinking about Rolands and, uh, and Jens de Boucher. They're, Jens is from the region, he's super motivated for, for that race and their boat riders are super, super strong in the wind, who don't really, or don't climb so super good, but for them it's, I think this one suits them the most. And they have a ton of experience. They have all the pressure from the team and also the experience from the team. So I expect one or the other to do a big result. And your last one is Stiba, who I have not included in my list either. So he was very close last year. He was just gapped. I don't know if people remember last year on Kimmelberg. Sagan, okay. Cancellara and Van Mark. Eh, Sagan, Cancellara, Van Mark got across of them. Greg Van Avermaet, Stiba and yeah, were left behind. So, Stibar obviously maybe like Terps are peaking a little bit later. I think so. Uh, on the opening weekend in Belgium, I thought Stibar is not so super strong, but then uh, I was watching TV for uh, Stade Bianchi and uh, whew, that was really, really impressive. So, uh, yeah, I expect him to be super strong in, uh, in the upcoming week. Uh, my two stars, I have Terpstra. Uh, if it is windy, I think he is probably the best Rider in the and kind of real strong wind that I've seen. I've stuck in Degenkolb and Christoph just in case. Now last season you mentioned the the 
the peloton blew apart after about 50 kilometers uh, and that impacted the, the chase towards the end if that doesn't happen this season if we have a larger group going towards the end together then we could get some teams working together to bring the bait back and Christ Christoph and Dagenkov clearly are good over long distance uh, so uh -huh. that's why I've got both of them now no surprises three stars we have the exact same riders uh, okay. a choice we have to have the same guys Sagan Van Avema, Gaviria yeah. now you as a rider, I won't ask you about Greg because I know you're good friends with him, but you, you watch Sagan, you know, you obviously are going to race against Sagan. How, how, how do you plan in your head? How, how do you go about beating a Peter Sagan? Uh, just the same way. I think for me, Sagan, the way he rides, he is obviously the best. And uh, he has so much force and oh, tactically... What he does is good until the last K. He always messes up the last K. Gets caught in the front. Sarajevo, if he, I mean, in Sarajevo he has, he has like 15 seconds going in the last K. If he pulls until 500 meters to go, swings it off, goes to the back. The other two riders, they also have nerves. So one or the other will crack and will go from too far. But instead, what does he do? He, he launches a sprint at 350 meters to go. Like he's doing a sprint training with no one in the wheel. Where there was an ex world champion and a <laughs> super talented Alaphilippe in the wheel. So it's not that easy to just win races. And I think for the big Sagan, you just have to work with him a little bit as much as you can. Hope he doesn't drop you. And uh, well, hope he makes the same mistake in, in the last game. <laughs> it is interesting because he, he made the mistake in uh, Umloop and, and Greg yeah. benefited by out sprinting him. He almost made the same mistake in Kurna. He was caught on the front. Now, it was further out. It was potentially maybe 1.5, 1.6k. Interesting. Everyone stayed back. They left him on the front, and he had a, a great moment where he turned around and just, like, laughed <laughs> at the other riders. And then Trentine made, Trentine made a mistake. Uh, yeah, well, oh, there's always this one rider who's going to crack. Uh, if you, and also, if you, if you pull the last K every time, Everyone's gonna know you do. That's your. That's how you work. So, uh, for me, he, every every final I I watched him do, he always makes the same mistake. If I had his legs, uh, I wouldn't lose races. <laughs> <laughs> sure. uh, so you would sit on Sagan from about what three k out? <laughs> oh, just I w if I was if I was Sagan, I would just pull until five hundred meters to go even, and then depending on the the gap you have on, on the the following group, you just start riding next to or behind the guys who are with you, and in a one on one sprint without being out of the wind, I think it's nearly unbeatable. Something not happened similar to you last season uh, when you lost to Gronewegen. Well, lost to Gronewegen. Yeah. Uh, they tried to let, let you stay on the front, didn't they? Yeah, but they won't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> It's a mistake they've made one time and it's never happened again because I just waited until everybody came back. <laughs> yeah, I remember. And people were kind of going, why you do that? But you almost won. So. Uh, and the last, well, Gavaria, super talented. Yeah. Another Sagan, do you think? Uh, I think Gavaria is uh, the fastest of uh, the upcoming years. I mean, I hope for him, but I have the feeling it's going to be like that. And um, yeah, Quickstep, I also already read in the newspapers that uh, the boss from Quickstep said for um, Duarte Vladren and Gent Rivergem, we're going all in for Gaviria. So, mm. That already does a lot, I think. A lot of pressure on his shoulders, but he is supremely talented. Uh, your training partner, your good friend, Greg Van Avermaet, last season for Gent Rivergem, he was just coming back from illness. Uh, mm -hmm. He was looking good in Milan San Remo on Saturday. I read that he was a touch frustrated that he wasn't in the best position for the podium. Yeah. He couldn't respond to the attack from Sagan. Uh, this type of race looks great for him, yeah? Absolutely. All of, uh, actually, all of the upcoming races until Lies Bastogne Liège are good for him. So, in every preview, we have to have we have to give him three stars. I think with, uh, with all the results he already had. So. I know these previews, these are, they're getting boring. It's always Sagan, it's always Van Avermaet. Yeah, 
<laughs> it's cycling these days. <laughs> okay, so if you had to pick one, the winner of Gen- yeah. Veligam. I think most likely the winner is going to be Gavinia. Okay, that leaves me clear to pick Sagan uh, yeah. as my winner. And do you think it will be a a small bunch sprint or a, a small group like last season? What would be your your hunch if if we get some wind? If we get some wind, they announced like sixteen kilometers an hour wind. If that's the case, I expect most likely to have a small bunch sprint. With, with small bunch, I mean 50, 60 riders. But I hope it's going to be a scenario like last year where a really small group goes to the finish line. Like 5 to 10 guys, that would be the ideal scenario. And two riders from AJ2R in that 5 to 10. <laughs> that would be really nice. <laughs> okay, Oliver, thank you very much for giving up your time to do this. Uh, best of luck for what is a very, very busy week for yourself. Uh, it is, thanks a lot. Some more top tens, no doubt, and possibly a, a visit to the podium. Hope so. Oliver Nason, thank you very much. Good evening. Yeah, thanks a lot. Ciao, ciao.